So we've seen what the definition of hermeneutics. And again, it's something we do all the time. It's something that we uh, practice on a daily basis. But when it comes to the Bible, there are cer certain things that we're going to have to take into consideration. And these, again, are sort of fancy words that we use, but we do these all the time. But let me, let me just sort of go through and, and help us understand related terms. You're going to see them, you'll read about them, and these are, you know, if you will, church terms kind of thing. But it's important to understand, and this is, this is something that um, we're going to kind of give you the definitions, which are the big words, and then sort of a what does this really mean. So first word is, is hermeneutics itself. And if you think about it, I use that carpenter example, well, think about it as your toolbox. It's your toolbox to help you determine meeting. It's your saw, it's your hammer, it's your screwdriver, it's your whatever, your plane, your sandpaper, whatever you want to say. It's the, the things that are in your toolbox. That's your hermeneutics in general. And those are the principles or the science and the art which is going to be used. These are the things that we're going to be able to use to understand. And this is going to give us the foundation of how we're going to now use them because hermeneutics, remember part of the definition, wasn't just understanding, right? Hermes understood what the gods were saying. But now Hermes has to now communicate that to men, right? That's how hermeneutics is. So we have to take God's word and say, great, I understand it. Now how do I communicate it? So this is some of those more related terms. Um, the first term, though, is called exegesis. And this means to bring out of or to draw out of. And this is the process for determining meaning. We haven't got to communicating it yet, but there's a process of, okay, here's what God's Word said. Now, how do I draw that meaning out to understand what He actually was saying? And that process is going to include a lot of things we're going to talk about, including bridging gaps uh, between the writer and today. Um, and the reality is true, true, pure exegesis is really done in the original languages. And we've We've mentioned that original languages is very important because you can go back into those languages and say, okay, here's how they wrote stuff, here's the way they emphasize things. So to draw true meaning out is really there. But that does not mean that we can't have with good translations and some study aids and tools and things we're going to talk about um, a good understanding of what God's Word said. But true exegesis really is um, drawing meaning from the original language. So that's exegesis. So we have hermeneutics as our toolbox to help us. Exegesis is to draw the meaning out, the process of drawing it out. And now we get to exposition. And this is where kind of what Hermes' real role was. Okay, here's what God said. I now understand the meaning, so now I have to communicate it. And so exposition is the communication of the meaning. But here's something that's important. Not for the benefit of you, the person who is exegeted it, it's for the benefit or the edification of the hearer. It wouldn't do any good for Hermes to communicate from the gods and go, well, I understand what they say. Tough if you guys didn't. It doesn't profit anybody. So when we, we, we exposit, we are now saying, I'm going to take the meaning that I understand and I'm going to communicate it to its profitable and edifying to you. Talking big theologic words to a two-year-old really isn't very good exposition, is it? because they would not be profited or edified with it. And yet, talking as a two-year-old to seminary students isn't going to be particularly exegetical or expositionally um, profitable to them either. They're not going to be edified by that. So again, communication, that exposition is, how am I going to communicate it that it's going to be appropriate and edifying to those hearing? It's not for us to sound smart. So these words here, these are just terms we're trying to explain. It's not for to say, oh, well, I know what exposition is and I know exegesis. That's not the point. If that's all we're about, then, you know, we shouldn't be teaching anybody because <laughs> that's not the profit or edification to those who are listening. So that is really the end objective. We want people to be edified. Now, there's two forms that, if you will, is kind of the structures of communication. And one is sort of a toolbox for preaching, and this is referred to as homiletics. And there's another structure for communication, and think about this as a toolbox for teaching, and this is called pedagogy. And you'll, you've heard of somebody being a pedagogue, well that means they're a teacher. Somebody who is a, uh, who's giving a homily, they're preaching. 
you've ever heard those those words used. And so what we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, I understand the meaning. I've exegeted it. Now I'm gonna exposit it. But there's a two forms. One is a form for a lecture, if you will, or a sermon. And the way you communicate in that is going to be different because right now I'm teaching. I'm doing pedagogy. But see, I can stop and ask you questions. We can have interaction and discussion. You can't do that in a sermon. You have to be able to communicate in a form and with the tools and techniques so that your hearers can be edified without them interacting. That's a skill. And it's a very it's a very different skill than what I'm trying to do right here is say, okay, do you understand what I'm saying? If I pause and ask you that question, we can interact. That's a different technique. You can't do that during a sermon. So this again, two toolboxes, one for, if you will, the monologue, <laughs> the preacher going on long, long, and the um, pedagogy, the, the teacher interacting with you. And again, that's usually that kind of a dynamic. So again, Toolbox for preaching, toolbox for teaching. Both for exposition, for the edification of the hearer, based on the exegesis drawing out the meaning from the toolbox of what we're trying to do in our hermeneutics. Understanding how to communicate what God said to men. So that's really what we're dealing with in all those related terms.